efforts to combat frequent flooding in Metro Manila will be consolidated. MJ Mondhar reports. Many areas in Metro Manila become instant swimming pools during heavy rainfall. This has long been a concern for residents of the metropolis. In response, Interior Secretary Benher Abalos is pushing to unify all flood control programs in Metro Manila. If we could just sit down, look at the urban plan of each city, harmonize it as a whole of Metro Manila. No, nasa ng park mo, nasa ng walkway mo, nasa ng mass transport system mo. No, napakalaking bagay nito. Metro Manila is composed of 17 local governments. Each has its own flood control programs. And San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora, who chairs the Metro Manila mayors, is in favor of a unified flood control plan. Yung ating uh, flood control development plan ay inaayos sa po natin. Ibig sabihin, uh, maglalaan talaga ng pondo ang MMDA upang planuhin po ang ating uh, drainage systems uh, sa kabuuan ng Metro Manila. The mayor emphasized that times have changed, especially with the increased population in Metro Manila, leading to high water demand. This results in increased water waste. The solution is to expand the drainage system's capacity and locate and repair all canals and waterways. Secretary Abalos pointed out that Metro Manila mayors have already succeeded in implementing a unified ticketing system for road violations, indicating that they can and do the same for flood control plans. Kailangan we work as one together. It's so hard working alone. Tayo naman po ay nasa unang taon pa lamang ng uh, Administrasyon Marcos. So meron pa tayong limang taon upang uh, tapusin ang master plan ito. At not just the master plan but also the actual implementation. For God of the Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMNI News. Representatives of gasoline station appear before the Philippine Congress amid the continuous rise in all your prices in the country. MJ Mudahar, tell us more. Gas station representatives were summoned to Congress on Monday afternoon, September 18. Big gasoline station owners like Filipina Shell, Flying V, Total, and smaller stations under the Independent Philippine Petroleum Companies Association were present. All of them were called to find a solution on the ongoing increase in oil prices. This week, gasoline prices have gone up again by 1 peso 70 centavos to 2 peso per liter. While diesel prices increased by 2 peso 30 centavos to 2 peso 60 centavos per liter. Kerosene prices have also risen by 2 peso to 2 peso 30 centavos per liter. Uh, your friends here in the house uh, want to listen to you because we want to work together to see how we can mitigate the prices. The Congress has also opened to suggestions from oil companies to ease the burden on motorists. The leader of the House previously mentioned that they are studying proposals to repeal the oil deregulation law and suspend the collection of oil excise tax. Uh, we are very much open to um, uh, making suggestions as clear and uh, direct as uh, even making recommendations to the uh, Office of the President and to the economic managers. By next week, Congressman Tulfo said that oil industry players are yet to determine the sacrifices that they're willing to make to help the riding public due to their weekly oil price hike. For Ganimabalo Philippines, I'm Jemon Dihar, SMNI News. President Bombo Marcos made a surprise visit to our fellow Filipinos in Singapore. MJ Modahar, tell us more. What you are watching right now is not footage from the 2022 presidential election period. This is the latest video of President Ferdinand Bombo Marcos Jr. during his visit to Filipinos at the Lucky Plaza Mall in Singapore on Sunday, September 17. During the election period, then-presidential frontrunner Bombo Marcos always received a rock star reception. And this was witnessed again during President BBM's surprise visit to Filipinos in Singapore. Our fellow Filipinos expressed their support for the president and wished for the success of his administration. They also wished good health for the first family. So, 
noon yung isang beses, makita mo siya ng malapitan, maawakan mo. It's a privilege to have one is done para po mapatunit na patas niya yung ekonomiya natin at tiwala lang sa gobyerno. President Marcos Jr. was with First Lady Liza Araneta Marcos and Speaker Martin Romualdez during the visit to Lockheed Plaza Mall. According to the Presidential Communications Office, the President met with various investors while in Singapore for the Milken Institute's Asia Summit. Among them were officials from India's GMR Group, who expressed interest in investing in the Philippines in the areas of airports, roads, and energy projects. Singaporean multinational technology company Dyson also committed to investing 11 billion pesos in the Philippines over the next two years. Additionally, Malaysian retail specialist Balairam Group expressed its desire to expand operations in the Philippines by establishing airport outlets. For Ganama Below Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMLI News. The Legal Council of Kapisanan Social Media Broadcasting ng Pilipinas has provided clarification regarding an issue implicating the supposed involvement of Pastor Apollo Sikibaloy in the case filed against the TV host. MJ Mudahar filed this report. During a public service program on SMNI aired on Saturday, Pinoy Legal Minds anchor attorney Mark Tolentino clarified the involvement of Pastor Apollo C. Kibuloy in their recent controversy involving TV host and comedian Vice Ganda and his real-life partner Ayun Perez. This comes after several showbiz-oriented programs talk about rumors suggesting the good pastor's involvement in the case. But attorney Tolentino refuted the rumors. Wala, wala, wala ang kinalaman si, si Pastor Apollo dito. So, in fact, that is only a person. In fact, wala ang kinalaman ng SMNI. Tolentino serves as the legal counsel for the Kapisanan ng social media broadcasters ng Pilipinas Incorporated, the group that filed cases against the comedian. Prominent legal figures who have had programs on SMNI, such as attorney Salvador Panelo and chief presidential legal counsel Juan Ponce Enrile, have expressed their opinions against Vice Ganda also known as Jose Marie Visceral and Ayun Perez or Binigdo Perez. Yung mga sinasabi ni Secretary JPE, personal opinion po niya yan. Yung sinasabi ni Sec Secretary Salpanelo, personal opinion yes. din niya yan bilang isang journalist or isang part ng show nila. And yung sa akin naman, uh, as a private lawyer. Tolentino stated that his clients deemed the obscene act in question to be Vice Ganda's supposed imitation of a sexual activity when he licked icing off his finger during the July 25, 2023 episode of the Noontime Show. He added that this scene violated Section 6 of Republic Act No. 10175, also known as the Cybercrime Prevention Act of 2012. Gumagawa siya ng mga eksena na obscene, obscenity and indecency. So what is obscenity, what is indecency, depende na yan sa court. The complaint aligns with the MTRCB suspension of Vice Ganda's show, It's Showtime, for 12 days. Ang freedom of press, freedom of expression, hindi naman absolute yan. Kahit anong gagawin mo, may limitation. Yes. yes, we are a democratic and a republican country, but may limitation ang freedom of press. Revised Penal Code Article 201 penalizes immoral doctrines, obscene publications and exhibitions, and indecent shows. The accused camp has yet to comment on the case. For Ganababala Philippines, MJ Mondihar, SMNI News.